You've got to improvise to survive. Guys, we're continuing the series of taking normal, ordinary items that we have around the house and turning them into tools for survival. You know, in a grid down situation, it's really important to be able to improvise, and cans are one thing that we have a lot in our pantry. This was a great weekend to make this video because we have three extra boys, some friends of my son's, that are spending the weekend with us, and so I went ahead and got a bunch of different fruit, and we've put them in bowls, and they've already started eating it. <laughs> Peel this label off. There's adhesive right here on the sink, and so at first, it's going to be a little difficult, but once you get past the sealant, it comes right off. To be honest with you, you may or may not need to take off the label. One thing though that I did realize and tried is these labels are not really that flammable. Uh, they will burn, but they don't burn well and they don't burn for long. We're going to make a scoop out of this can or a small little shovel. And what you want to do is cut at an angle. Uh, and we'll have the back end a little more full. And this will be guesswork. Um, and again, these 10 snips are going to be invaluable. Getting past that first part. Just kind of want to feel out how deep you want your scoop. Be careful these edges can be very, very sharp. Now we have a scoop and we're going to try it out. Here I have some sand that was spilled out from a sandbag and it makes the ground kind of uneven. I need to get rid of it. So I'm just going to use this scoop. Of course you can put it in any kind of container you want. And of course, this goes with whatever you're going to use this for. This scoop is pretty durable, and uh, just be careful for the edges, but uh, not a bad little option. There are two different type lids that come on most of the cans. Uh, of course, one is just the flat, one is with the pull tab. Uh, both have their advantages and disadvantages. Uh, what we're going to use now is the flat one, and we're going to make this into a signal mirror. Now, it has a little bit of a sheen on one side and it's gold on the other. There are a number of things you can use. Charcoal would probably be something good to use on this. But for us, we're going to use a little aluminum polish. Again, you know, find out what works best for you. The big thing is we want to concentrate on the center, uh, getting it a really good, nice, high polish if we can. It's not like a mirror, but I think it's going to work. Now, a very important step in using a signal mirror is to make a hole in the center. And this will help you to aim. We're going to just use a punch and a little hammer. Probably use a small screwdriver if you can get one small enough. We want to make that hole at least a decent size so we can see. But it doesn't have to be too big. We'll try this. Yeah, right here we're getting enough sunlight to reflect very well. Even with this rudimentary polish, we're still getting a lot of good reflection. Now we're going to make a small pail. We can take off the label, but I'm not going to do it for this one. Uh, first thing you need is some kind of punch or something to punch through to make two holes on either side. One thing I'm going to do is use this mallet to give me a little bit of backing while I push this through. Make sure it's kind of close to the other side if possible. We're going to take this metal clothes hanger uh, and I'm going to just clip it this is what we're going to use to make our handle. I'm going to make sure that it will go through and it does. I'm going to go ahead and take the snips and just use it to bend this around. Now we're going to go about center way and we're going to bend it around, putting our other end through the other side, and then we're going to again attach it. And now we have a pail. And I mean, this is great. You can bail water. Uh, without just with your hand, you can actually carry the water this way, whatever you're doing. Uh, one thing too though you can do with this, and you can make this any length you want, is to make this into a cooking pot. With some kind of mount or piece of wood on top, place this over the fire and you can use it to cook. Now we're going to make a perimeter alarm using cans. You can use as many as you want. I'm just going to use three. Go ahead and poke a hole 
right through either side just like we did for our little cooking pot or our water pail. You can remove the labels or leave them on. Or you can actually uh, take the labels off and paint them to make them kind of a black color or a dark color. And that'll make them a little more harder to see. Take some twine, just run it through. I would probably run it through a couple of times just to give it a little tension. And then just run it into your next can and so on and build you a little daisy chain. <laughs> Now once you have your cans tied up, we're going to set it between two points. Now you want to take one side and tie it up to some kind of tree or limb or whatever it is that you're trying to secure it to. And here we're going to tie it to the second point. Now here we have our can secured, but we need something in it to make some noise. Of course, probably one of the easiest things are some rocks. You don't want to fill it up too much because you want to have a lot of room for noise. Or some screws or nails or whatever metal object. Or you go with whatever you got. <laughs> a little stronger string would be good, but really once the noise happens, it happens. But if it's swinging back and forth, it's going to be hard for them to stop it. Now we're going to make a tea light candle out of a can. And I've already pulled the label off and we've already got the holes in. This was actually from a previous project. I think this was from the alarm deal. So we're going to cut out a window in the front. Now, a lot of guys will use the cutout part for the lid, but we're going to use the existing lid. It fits just right on top and it makes it really easy. First thing we're going to do is to go ahead and make our cuts. Uh, you want to try to keep the shape as much as you can. I'm using this old hawkbill knife that my grandfather had. I don't really want to mess up any of my good blades. We'll probably have to do some reshaping afterwards, but that's okay. I'm going to use my snips just because I don't want to deform the can too much. Now we can bring back the shape somewhat. Guys, this isn't anything that, unless you're going to use this as a decoration in your home, uh, you know, it just is, it can be as crude. It's not really all that important. Now we're going to take the old coat hanger. I've snipped the ends a little bit because we don't want it to protrude past the, um, up to the lid. You just want it to be able just to kind of lock into place where it doesn't come flying out. So here we have our handle in place. And uh, now we're going to take the lid, just pop it down. And because we were working on it, it's going to be not quite, won't snap into place, but you can fit it. Next, take your tea light candle. Set it down into the can. There we go. And here you have a small little lantern. You can hang this in different places. You can, of course, as many cans as you have, you can make a ton of these. It just makes it really nice to put some light around your campfire. And of course, obviously you need the tea light candles. Now we're going to take part of what we've cut out from one of the other cans, or you can cut it directly, and uh, we're going to make a small arrow. First, we're just going to cut out a large triangle. You can just shape a crude arrow, but you want these little points to be able to tie this down to your stick. Now I'm going to take my knife and just cut a groove. We're going to place that arrow right in that little slit. Next we'll take some string to secure this down. So we have a small arrow. You may want to double down on this, but it's definitely sharp enough to penetrate. If I wanted to stick myself, it could do it. It's thin, but it is sharp, so this could be used if needed. Of course, taking the pieces, you can pretty much do anything you can imagine. I mean, if you can think it, and if it will work with this, you can come up with all kind of stuff. One thing I'm thinking about here is just making some kind of scraper. And uh, I can just use this. I can use the lip, which is not near as sharp, and uh, be able to, to scrape. And if I need to clean something or scrape something off, I can do it with this. One thing I think would be very useful, especially in a survival situation, is possibly a small lure. And I think we've all seen the lures that are like spinners. Just make that shape 
and uh, you can actually uh, with the corrugation it kind of gives it a little bit of some flash as well take our trusty punch put a hole right at the top and here we have an improvised fishing lure if you're like me I'm not very organized with my screws and my nails now this is definitely an organizational thing that you can do every day but one of the big things about this is that you have these items separate you know where they are and you can get to them and in a crisis situation that can be very important uh, one thing that was really funny was uh, Henry David Thoreau, when he was building his cabin on Walden Pond, he bought a hovel from some Irish immigrants, and he pulled each nail out while he was disassembling the house, and then he reconstructed it using those nails. <laughs> so in a survival situation, nails, screws, things like that could be a commodity. Of course, now I've started something. <laughs> Now a small lid like this pop top and of course we have this little key right here that we can use for a number of things. In fact when I did a video on aluminum cans I took these pop tops and used them for a couple of different things. Now one thing that this could be used for right away is just cutting it like this and maybe just leaving it a little bit. You could actually use this as, an, as a hanger and you could tie something to it and then be able to hang something and be able to pull it off really quickly. We've got this hook. We can just hook it, hang the pack, you know, and of course, it's according to what it is. I mean, this obviously has a little hook. I could do that. But if you're going to hook it to something that doesn't have a handle, pop it on there. When you're ready to go, pull it off. And, you know, this weighs a couple of pounds, so it can hold it. Now, one thing you can do with the lid is just bend it in half. At least give you a place to grab and then you'll have the sharp edge right here now we can hammer this down and make it a little tighter but here we have a knife let's test it out you know it's not super sharp but it will cut now obviously you could tear this but i think if you got this down pretty good you could actually use this pretty effectively actually on small game you could actually use this as a skinner uh, you could use this as a scraper uh, there's a number of things you could use this small little tool for. So I'm not going to really call it a knife, but really it could be used for multiple purposes. This is a multi-tool. <laughs> now this is an average size soup can. You can use larger cans if you want, but you're going to have to have more ventilation. For this one, we're going to have four places here at the bottom. And we're going to start right here, getting in that lip. And it's going to bend the can a little bit. That's okay. Once we open up this side, the side will come in from the top, lining up with that hole, and we're going to bring it all the way around. Now, one step next is we're going to bring this back out. This is going to serve as our feet. Now we have this side popping out the bottom. Now you're going to want to do that in four equally spaced places on the can and be careful not to cut yourself because these get pretty sharp we're going to go ahead and bring our feet around on each one i would probably recommend doing this as the last step to keep those sharp edges at bay <laughs> Now we have the four holes at the bottom. We're going to put eight at the top. Bring it around. Fairly evenly spaced. You may have to get inside and kind of straighten this up. But again, be really careful because this can cut you. I'm going to go quarters first. And back in between. Be careful because the integrity of the walls are starting to become a little weak. So again, we're just going to straighten it out. It's pliable enough to where we can get that back out at least into a decent shape. Next we want to bend over our edges. This will keep us from cutting ourselves. 
You can actually do this with your fingers, but again, be very careful. You can do it with a pair of pliers, but we're trying to do it with just this tool. Actually, this was inspired by another video. I'll have it linked down below. Uh, I don't remember the name of it, but it was really good, very concise. And now we have our stove complete. Let's try it out. The one thing about having these small feed is it gives you a draft underneath. And of course you have your holes in the bottom. Uh, we can actually feed some wood into these little holes. And of course that's gonna limit the size. We're gonna use some of the Ingalls Creek Fierce Fire. This is from Ingalls Creek Outdoors. This stuff is fantastic. Just to get the fire started a little easier. We're gonna go ahead and enter a little bit. And then we're gonna light it. And you can see it starts right away. Now to be honest, it would be nice to have a stand because this is not super sturdy, but we're gonna try it anyway. And we're gonna take some water and put it in this little percolator actually, but it's a pitcher. Set it on our little fire. That's gonna calm the fire down some as well. Then we're just gonna let it go. Gonna take a little instant coffee. All right, we got our water ready. We're gonna go ahead and just pour it into our coffee cup. So while I'm not a big fan of instant coffee, if I'm out of coffee, it's SHTF regardless of what's going on. Whew, that's hot. That's, that's not bad. But guys, being able to improvise not only helps you in a bug out situation, it could be vital in a bunker in situation. Thinking out of the box, or in this case, the can, and being able to improvise and to create tools that you might need in a survival situation. So guys, if you're really serious about prepping and survival, check out Survival Dispatch Insider. It is one of the best resources on the web, and I upload one video a week that's exclusive to Survival Dispatch Insider that you're not gonna see here on Sensible Prepper. So check it out. Be strong, be of good courage. God bless America, long live the Republic. bending our and here we have our and here we have ourselves an improvised fishing of course of course we've all had of course there is of course you 